Hey, all right, FRF Nation, Aaron Zamzo here with uh, the Fire Rescue Athlete Podcast. If you're watching us online, uh, firerescuefitness.com. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the COVID-19 vaccine, and I'm, I'm contacting and reaching out to the smartest person I know. I went to college with this guy, and when I was out doing different things, he was in the labs. Uh, he went to Harvard. He got his PhD studying this stuff, so when I had questions about the vaccine, First thing I did is I reached out to my good friend, Dr. Jeremy Stewart. Now, I've never called him doctor until just now. I think once or twice I maybe called you that in the bars, and that was for a whole other reason. But it doesn't take away from the fact that you've lived most of your life in a lab. And uh, I called you about two and a half weeks ago, and I said, Jer, I am up. I'm a first responder. I'm up for this COVID-19, this, this vaccine. What do I need to know and why? And you just you, you told me this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I told you that, uh, first of all, I'm jealous that you get to take it before me, of course, you <laughs> first. Um, but I think it's absolutely appropriate that first responders and people in the health uh, medical industry need, need to take this vaccine. It's really important that they do. Um, you know, a lot of this has to do with trust. I think if you boil it all down, a lot of this has to do with, do you, tr you know, who do you trust? I'm a scientist. I've um, been a scientist my whole life. That's my identity. I know a lot of other scientists. I know how this stuff is, is sort of how it works. I know the biology of it. I know the manufacturing process. And I also know the regulators who are involved. So it's a lot easier for someone like me to have that trust as opposed to John Q. Public, people who just don't have that familiarity. Right, um, right. So that's, that's, that's one big part of of my recommendation, personal recommendation, recommendation for to you to, to take this as soon as you can. Um, and it really kind of just branches out from there. I think, you know, we can dive into all the science and things like that, but I think yeah. when you boil it all down, it really comes down to the trust and, and the familiarity with the amount of work uh, and regulation and, um, and knowledge that goes into the development of not just this vaccine, but, but any vaccine. Well, let's let's talk about that because the first question that comes up in firehouses is that that this has been fast tracked. This this vaccine has not gone through you know the regulations and the rigors that a normal vaccine would. Well, it has been fast tracked. There's no doubt about that. But there also haven't been any corners that have been cut. So you know we have to be very careful how you define fast track. And mm -hmm. I think that's where I think that's where a lot of the communication comes in, you know, in terms of how we say things. Um, you know, the name of the, the whole uh, name of the project was Operation Warp Speed. Yeah. I, I hate that name simply because it does, it, it, it tends to um, make people think that, oh my gosh, they're just doing this way too fast, right? Um, I understand why they named it that, but I think it was just from a public relations perspective, I think that was not the best name to use. So Yeah, why did they do that? What... What I made this such know. a fast track thing? Yeah, who knows? I, I think what's really important is we understand what was sped up here. Okay. Yeah. So normally, you know, when a when a company uh, or or public entity, you know, when they make vaccines, what they what you have to do, of course, is you have to test it, right? You got to make sure that it's safe and effective, right? Right. Um, if it causes more problems than it prevents, then it's useless. It's actually harmful, right? Um, so what manufacturers do is they work with the FDA. They go through what are called phase one through phase three trials. Um, each phase has, you know, is, has a particular purpose. Um, and when those, when you get through phase three, when you prove its effectiveness, that's normally when the manufacturers start making mass producing the vaccine. Um, At phase three. Yeah, you don't want to invest millions of dollars in making your vaccine before you know it works. Right. right? So the, one of the big differences between what's happening now versus what's happened in the past is that the government has given these companies money now just to say, listen, before, you know, while you test it, make it at the same time. Okay. Because if it is effective, then we'll have millions of doses right away. Right. And if it's not, we eat that, right? Exactly. If it's not effective, if it doesn't work, then you're not out any money because we gave it to you. You know, we essentially gave you that money to do the manufacturing. So you're not, you're not out, you know, that, that amount of money. So that's one of the big things that is making this go so much faster. Now, the part where you test it, the part where you actually have to test the populations and to see if it's safe and effective, you can't speed that up, right? right. Crops, only, crops only grow so fast. 
right? There's some things you just cannot speed up. So you had to, they had to go through that and they had to take the time to do that and do that correctly. And that's the part where the FDA, they're not gonna bend on that. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make special allowances uh, just because there's a, a larger need in the population right, right. now. But how do you know that? How do, how do I know? know that? That? Yeah, how do they know that? Yeah. How do you know that? So, so it's all documented. If you actually go to the FDA or the manufacturer's website, they have, the FDA has kind of like a playbook for this, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this has been going on, this has been happening for years. You know, vaccines have been around for a while. Right. So a playbook that you got to play by. And you have to document each phase and the results, and then you're allowed to go to the next phase. And then you're allowed to go to the next phase after that. And all of that is public domain. So, so the, the companies are required to talk to the FDA throughout this problem, for, throughout this process, and publish their results. And they're only allowed to go to the next phase when they've proven the results from the, the, from the previous phase. And so, um, you know, all this is documented. It's available for, for the public to take a look at. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I think what's lacking is that there's no, it, it's not obvious to the average person in terms right. of where do I go to look. Yeah, and, and so, how, but how do I know, like, you know, these FDA guys, can, can they be influenced? You know, in, in your experience, have you ever seen that? Can they be influenced? Like, I guess I don't have any knowledge of what these guys are like, but right. I mean, you obviously, right, you do. Yeah, I do. And I think, I think this is where that, where that familiarity, where you know somebody on the other side of that, that's where it really helps. Because mm -hmm. I, I went, so I went to graduate school with, uh, he, he, I went to school with them and we spent years together in the lab. And then he went to the FDA. He, he decided to become a, a career FDA person. And he's a senior official now at the FDA. At the FDA. Um, I think what you have to remember is that these are people just like you and me. Right. These are people who go to work, they punch a clock, um, regardless of who's in office, whether it's Republican or Democrat or this president or that president, it doesn't really affect them. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're there to do a job. And if your job is looking at back, uh, clinical trial data, that has nothing to do with who's in office. And just yeah. like, you know, just like you or me, we have a certain level of integrity when we do our work right? We're not going to fake stuff in order to get the job done. Um, they're not going to do that either because it's, it's something that they've been doing for years and it's completely agnostic of, uh, you know, who, who might be in power or how great the need is. They don't, they don't get paid more if they don't approve a drug, Yeah. right? They right. don't get paid less if they let a drug, you know, it, 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 it has nothing to do with, with uh, their day-to-day -day life. So this is what so, they do. Right. It's this just, is what you do. Just, you te do. you right now. Your your company is is actually uh, testing for coronavirus, right? That's right. So we. So in we, a way, you doing this is putting yourself on it. But by you actually, you you back this science so much that you're willing to promote it to almost put your company out of business. I hope uh, your CEO isn't watching. Don't, don't say out of business. <laughs> yeah. Right, 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 right. But 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 certainly certainly um yeah so. You know, right now, yeah, my company does a lot of COVID testing. Um, we didn't plan to. Uh, it was just, we were approached by our local hospital and, and who needed a lot of help. They said, yeah. listen, we're, we're, we're getting eight to 10 day turnaround times for test results. Can you please help us? And we said, absolutely. Um, but yeah, you're right. As, as a vaccine, when this vaccine fully gets, you know, available to the public, testing will go away. And, and while if it may not- If people take the vaccine. If people take the vaccine, exactly. Right. And right. so- and so, you know, regardless of that, there's a greater public health good here that, that needs to be, you know, my bottom line doesn't even compare to the, to the, to the, the effect on people's lives uh, if they take this vaccine. So, so, look, I'll be fine. You know, the company right. will be fine. Doctor. I, you don't go into science. You don't become a scientist to make money. You know, you do it for other reasons. Yeah. Right? There, there's, you don't hear about you know, a guy, John Q at the lab bench who, who is a billionaire. It, it's just not why you do it. Um, uh, there's a greater purpose and, and a higher purpose here. That's, well, that's especially now, like before we get into that, like greater purpose, because I think that's also important. The other question that a lot of people have when you talk about the science, the science behind this vaccine, can you give me the, give me the rundown of it? Now you, you explained it to me really well. You know, like I like to say, like, give me the Forrest Gump approach to what this vaccine is. And this is a new technology. 
Oh, That's you're talking, so you're referring to the mRNA vaccine? Yep, yep. Yeah, okay, sure. So yeah, this is, it's a newer technology. Now it's not completely new. There's a lot of, there's a lot of research that's already been done into these types of vaccines. So I wanna make that clear. Has it been used uh, before? No, it hasn't been approved. It hasn't been approved by the FDA in the United States before. So that, that in that oh, sense, okay. new. But there are other vaccines like this for other viruses. So Zika virus, herpes virus, th those are uh, the rabies virus. Those, those mRNA vaccines have been de developed for, for, for other viruses. Okay. This is the first widespread approval of an mRNA vaccine in the United States. And the way that it works, I think the easiest way to explain it is, you know, vaccines, they all kind of do the same thing. The idea is to make a piece of whatever you want to be immune to, right? So if it's, uh, if it's the COVID, what, what you do is the idea is to expose your body to a piece of it, not the whole virus, because you don't want to make yourself sick. Right. The piece of it, a piece of it that's harmless, right? So that the next time your body sees it, it will remember. The antibodies will recognize parts of the protein and it will be able to respond a lot faster, right? Yep. Now, usually in order to do that, if you go all the way back to, to modern medicine, mothers used to take um, uh, pustules, like little open, uh, like pus from people who had smallpox. And they used to scrape their children's skin with that. So that was inoculating their children. Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, it was like the very first vaccinations, you know, that, 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 that used to go on. Nowadays, with modern medicine, of course, we can just manufacture proteins uh, from a virus or a bacteria and make vaccines that way, right? It's much more controlled. It's much more scientific. This is really doing the same thing, except it, what's even more clever is that instead of making the actual part of the virus, you're introducing this what's called mRNA mm -hmm. and it's a message. It's a message that tells your own cells in your body to make a piece of the virus. Okay. So your own muscle cells, they inject it into your arm. Yep. And in the muscle cells in your arm, and the muscle cells are given this message by the vaccine. And then your own cells manufacture the protein itself from the virus, just a piece of the virus. And that way your antibodies can say, well, what? that doesn't belong in your body. Let's, let's get rid of it. So that the next time, if you really truly get infected, they'll know exactly what to look for. Right. So the coronavirus produces this protein and our bodies already know how to fight it. So we basically kill exactly. that protein yep. And, the, yep. and the coronavirus can't grow. The only difference between this mRNA vaccine and, and traditional vaccines is that it's actually giving us the instructions, your, your own cells, the instructions to make that protein instead of making it in a warehouse and then right. introducing it. Into and your, then introducing into it. Yeah. So that, that leads me to the next question, which a lot of times people have, well, there's so many different side effects of this then. Like you, you know, some, somebody said right away, oh, it's gonna be cause infertility. It's gonna cause, Guillain, uh, Guillain Barr syndrome, uh, you know, all these different side effects come out. And, and what does the data show you? What, what do you find? What, like as so, a scientist, you look at it and go, oh, what? Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly what these trials are, are designed to uncover. That's why you have to test it first, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, the Moderna vaccine, I think that had roughly 25,000 people involved in the initial tests in the phase three trials. And the idea is to say, okay, let's give this a wide dose. Uh, uh, let's uh, give a, a sample of the population this vaccine and then observe them very carefully to see if there are any side effects and, and document those side effects. Mm -hmm. um, so the current side effects, what came out of those trials is that uh, some people you'll get, you know, redness and swelling in the ejection site. Right, like you, a normal shot. Right, like a normal shot, like a flu vaccine. You may get a fever. Uh, you may feel lethargic. You may be tired that day. Um, things of that sort. Um, now it is rare. I've been, I'm, a, I'm a first responder. I've been tired since March, brother. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me right. too. Yeah, um, I do too. <laughs> so uh, now in some cases, there may be allergic reactions. Some people are allergic, you know, have severe allergic reactions. And so yep. if you actually look um, at the you know, every time, you know, I don't know if you've ever taken medications, you'll get a little information sheet that goes along with the medication that yeah. tells you. Yeah. Exact same thing with the vaccine. And so those instructions will say, you know, tell providers, tell physicians, you know, uh, have epinephrine available 
yeah. you know, steroid yeah. shot yeah. In, bubble in case there is an allergic reaction. It's very rare, but that's true of any vaccine. Yeah. You may have allergic. Any medication is like that too. You know, exactly. you don't know, right? You know, peanut allergies, right? Yeah. You know, so so those are those are kind of the some some of the uh, uh, observed side effects that have been seen with this vaccine. It's it's very similar to other vaccines. So what about the, like the infertility thing? No, I don't. Uh, so I, I looked I looked at I looked at there have been some social media reports of yeah. infertility, and and there was a particular quote by a, a, a I think a doctor who spoke about. Um, the vaccine, so the, the way that the vaccine, I don't want to get too, too technical here, but the vaccine is designed, the part of the protein that it tells your cells to make is called, uh, a part of it is from what's called the spike protein of mm -hmm. the virus. It's just, a, it's just a, a part of the virus. Now, there's another protein in, uh, in uh, the reproductive system of women that is similar but not the same to that virus protein, okay? And the, 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 the postings on social media said that since there were similarities that that may cause your own immune system to attack your own cell, you know, those cells, but it's really not the case. It's really not true. Um, it just doesn't work that way. First of all, they're not, they're not that similar. Mm -hmm. It's the closest thing, but they're not that similar. It'd be kind of like determining, like I can tell a Bu the difference between a, a Ford truck and a Chevy Cabriolet, um, yeah. they're, they're both cars, but they're very different. Right, one's a truck and one's a car, buddy. I can tell you've been in the lab for a long time, but that's okay. I get your point, that's a good there point. Go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's that sort of thing, you know? And so, and so unfortunately, those are the kind of things that can easily take hold, especially with the advent of social media. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and real quick on that, right, like, Everybody thinks that somebody is going to get rich out of this and that all these social media and all these different articles and are all, they're all motivated by money. But you made a point, you're like, a lot of these companies already got paid. They're getting paid regardless. So it just kind of dawned on me, like, so why they, if their vaccine doesn't work, they're not going to put it out there because that could be more detrimental to the company, right? Because they're already got their money. Yeah, look, they, 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 there's money to be gained for these companies, and no doubt about it. But you have to look at it both ways. You know, let's say, let's just take the worst case scenario. Let's say they did, let's say they did um, sweep something under the rug, right? right? Let's say there was some ineffectiveness or some actual harm to the general public because of because of the vaccine, and it wasn't wasn't you know revealed ahead of time. Yeah, and you didn't find any of that from the data, right? Like you didn't no, no, see no. any any, right? So. No, yeah. No. No. Not not beyond the, the the typical side effects that people you know right. yeah. any vaccine. Um, this this type of thing, you know, I think you said it best in our earlier conversation. This is the Super Bowl of of vaccine developers, right? right. This is the Super Bowl of of regulators. Um, if something like that actually happened, it would be it would destroy the whole industry for years. I mean, who would ever want to take a vaccine after that? Any vaccine. Forget right. about about the COVID vaccine? Uh, who would want to take MMR, you know, vaccines or the flu vaccine? And so, you know, the companies have to really take that into consideration, the, the, the big picture here. You know, you, by hiding any data, by faking any data, um, you're going to destroy any chance of future vaccine development for decades. Right. You destroy that trust, which is what you really started with. Like you said, that's why Trust right. those, like trust the scientists here, right? Like that's right. Which is which is which again? We come back to that. It all comes back to that. And so, the the companies, the venue, the vaccine manufacturers, um, they they are keenly aware of this, and and they have to think about their future over the next not just this quarter or next year, but far beyond that. So they're not motivated to hide any of this. As a matter of fact, I I told you of a story where. Um, where there were some differential effects of vaccines and that's already been made public. So no one's, no one's hiding anything here. Good. And do you trust the data? I do. I do. I trust the data. Um, I trust that um, it's being made public. I trust that it's being reviewed, uh, that the FDA, the CDC are, are, are um, having independent meetings uh, to review the data. I, I, I always like seeing when there are arguments. 
Yeah. You know, when scientists and regulators have arguments, that means that it's really being tossed around. Yeah. The what ifs are coming out, right? What's that? The what ifs are coming out. What ifs? The what ifs and hey, did you think about doing this? Or for example, there was a debate of um, like the, the 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 current vaccine, the one that is um, that uh, you'll be taking fairly Pfizer. soon. Pfizer. The Pfizer vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a debate on what are the what's the age cutoff? You know, w which ages and above should be. And some people dissented. You know, um, there was a debate with whether the the cutoff should be 16 and over or 18 and over. Mm -hmm. And many, some scientists said, no, it should be 18 and over. And others said, no, there's enough data to say 16. The point is, is that the data was reviewed. It was debated. It was discussed. And a, dis and a recommendation was made. And I always liked seeing that. Yeah, from a scientist standpoint. Yeah. Um, and, and I know, like, some of that stuff, I tried to look at it, and it's boring. I, I can't understand half of it. And, right. again, that's, that's why I, I, I went to you. And, and I can't thank you enough. Uh, um, you know, is there anything else that you would add, uh, you know, if any, any questions that you, you had and, or that you're getting from people, I mean, you know, for me, uh, listening from someone like yourself, like, you know, what, what I didn't touch on and I didn't want to bore people with is that, you know, you got paid to go to Harvard, get your PhD and, and, and study this. And, uh, you know, when you got out of school, you've, you've uh, really made a great name for yourself. And again, your company right now is doing COVID testing, um, and as much as I picked on you, um, you know, I, I mean, I, I give you all the pride. You were always in a lab, and uh, this is your Super Bowl, and I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk to, to me and, you know, the FRF Nation. Hopefully some people got some great stuff from this, but is there anything else you wanted to add to, all, to, to the well, conversation? I, yeah, I think so. I think if, you know, what I try to tell people, and this is the same things for going masks, for wearing masks, and, and the same thing argument is for the vaccine, is – I, I really think about this stuff as being good to your neighbor. You know, when I wear a mask, I'm not just protecting myself, I'm protecting everyone else around me, mm -hmm. or at least attempting to. I think the vaccine is the same story. You guys have probably heard in the, in the news the whole concept of herd immunity. Yep. And how when you get to a certain point, the rest of the population is protected. And so that's the same idea here. I think, you know, you're, you're a firefighter, Aaron. So I like, I like, I use the analogy of, you know, to prevent a fire from sp spreading, you want to wet, you want to have wet timber all around, right? right. Something that's wet, it's not going to spread. A, a person who's vaccinated is, is the exact same as that wet piece of timber. You know, they can stop the spread at least around them. Yeah. And so I, I think it's actually, a, um, you know, I think it's a kindness to do this. And I understand the concerns. I really do. I understand that there's the, you know, with, with social media and the public discourse these days, it's hard to trust. Mm -hmm. I get that. It's easier for someone like me to trust because I'm just more familiar with the data. I know where to go. I know a lot of the people. You know, I hope that our conversation today can, can instill a little bit of trust because I really believe with my whole heart that, um, you know, this vaccine is the right thing to do, that it's safe, that it's effective. And if it's not, if one comes out, there's multiple vaccines in development. If it's not, we'll know. We'll know yeah. about. It. Yeah. We'll know exactly. You know that that data will be revealed. It won't be hidden. Or it would so, have been already. I mean, there's some companies that probably have dropped out and, and have. Oh yeah. Oh, dropped great back. example. A great example is there's a whole uh, a large vaccine trial in Australia, and that trial was stopped. It was just it didn't work. Mm -hmm. You know. So so yeah. I mean, trials get stopped all the time. They do. They do. Um, you know, to, to develop a drug or a vaccine through all the three phases is, is it's hard. Um, you, you have to have a good product. And so and so it's not uncommon for these types of things to drop out. And, and, and if, if it is, then it's better Then we're all better for it because right. the process exists for a reason. So. Well, thanks, buddy. I, I think that addresses the biggest concerns right now. And maybe uh, in a couple of weeks, if you wouldn't mind coming back, doing a follow-up. I know people are going to continually have questions. Yeah. Um, I can only send you so much gear. So maybe two uh, interviews, maybe third, you know, I can't bribe you too much with, with things, but um, you know, Dr. Jeremy Stewart, thanks so much for your time. Uh, FRF Nation, if you do have questions, reach out to me and I can contact Jeremy uh, and, uh, and we can address some of them as these continually develop but um i think he hit it right on the head you know one of the best ways to stop the spread is through you know wearing masks and and getting vaccinated especially those in the front line and um you know i'm on board are you going to get vaccinated brother 
Oh yeah, as soon as I can. I've got a good friend of mine. He's an oncologist. He's getting vaccinated on Friday, um, and uh, as soon as I as soon as I get the notification that I'm in line, I'm I'm gonna do it. All right. Well, I think that says a lot too. So thanks, buddy, for the time. You're the best. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Take care. See you, buddy. All right.